2022. Don't back in January 2023, but uh, the next weeks down through the uh, New Year's, um, we will be cavorting with our relations outside of Spokane. So um, I hope every one of you has a wonderful time during that period. And uh, don't forget, if you need some stocking stuffers in a hurry, there are a certain set of books that um, will be quite nice for that purpose. Thanks again for all of the patrons who keep the show crimping along from one week to another. And um, we are proceeding as best we can one week after another. Um, I'm a little crouped up at the moment, having spent the last couple of days excavating my 60-foot driveway. <laughs> We've got snow coming in, and I've got to make sure that um, any little slush piles are eliminated before we get into a deep freeze, which will turn them into razor-sharp icicles. So um, I wanted to get that out of the way, and hopefully we'll be in a good shape for the rest of the week when I will be departing for um, uh, relations in Seattle. So anyway, for those of you who have been sticking it out all of this time, it'll come as a colossal shock that I've been going through replacing Darwin. Uh, Nathaniel Jensen's anti-evolution book, where he is insisting he has got that young earth creationist speciation thing nailed. And the last one that he's doing with his cute little charts, well, I think, uh, oh, oh, actually, there will be some additional um, charts later on that we'll be dealing with. But um, <coughs> he's got uh, horses, zebras, which are all in a relatively narrow family. And as you will spot, uh, they are popping up in a nice linear line. See, he likes to point all of that out. Hello, Barbara. Uh, so the question is, how could they avoid doing that? Because speciation, if it's relatively uh, stochastic, chance-oriented, um, so that over a very long period of time, you wouldn't necessarily get a huge amount of variation in the speciation rate. And then you take stuff that's actually covering millions of years and then arbitrarily scrunch them down to a 2,000, some uh, 4,000 year time frame. Actually, only 2,000, 3,000 at most, because that's the amount of time frame he's having species appear from one range to another. Um, of course, it's going to look linear. It can't avoid it. It's an artifact of the data. But he does kind of offer uh, some reprises of sources this time. So he's got a 2014 paper by Johnson. Uh, which is in PNAS, so I'll be putting the link up to that, uh, and bypasses their conclusion, which is that, quote, Equus first diverged in the New World, spread across the Old World 2.1 to 3.4 million years ago, and finally experienced major demographic expansions and collapses coinciding with past climate changes. And, hello, Brian. And um, <coughs> another paper, Orlando 2013, um, all of which he'd cited earlier in, in the book, by the way, uh, kind of peripherally around the corner, which is on um, uh, the genome sequencing of early middle Pleistocene horses, and that covers just millions of years right there. <coughs> uh, that was two of the four papers he cited in the entire book on the subject. Uh, the other uh, one was um, uh, Higuchi 1984 on the quagga, and uh, not the more recent Leonard 2005 on how the stripes were lost in the quagga. Uh, unfortunately, neither one of those are open access, so I won't be able to put some links in on it because I do like to make sure that links that I put in are freely accessible to viewers so that they can compare what the creationist says with what the actual papers say and not have to depend on my word for it. Oh, heaven for fam. Plus, looking at those papers is fun because, uh-oh, you learn stuff especially things that Jensen doesn't put in his book. Um, but we got better luck on the fourth site that he had, a Wang 2014. This was from Nature um, that um, traces the genetic mutations in the horses uh, starting way back 22 million years ago in the deep part of the lineage. So all Jensen's doing is just <laughs> compressing all that material together. Um, I had a fun uh, delay before I, I started up the, uh, the stream this time because there was a end times Daniel spouting uh, preacher that wasn't in my reference bibliography. And uh, he's got free stuff at his website, this Gerald Flurry, uh, who's apparently the son of a Stephen Flurry. So I'm going to have to find out what the background of it is. It's kind of a lineage of, of preachers from a church in Philadelphia. What it's doing on Spokane is anybody's guess, but we get an awful lot of religious 
uh, broadcasting videos shown on uh, KXLY, uh, the ABC affiliate here, uh, particularly on Sundays. Uh, so I'll be poking up into that because Jackson Wheat and I are going to eventually be doing a book on the um, evolution and development of religion, uh, not just the Bible one. Uh, that's topics that can come up. I suspect by the time we're done with that, that's going to be a multi-volume thing too. And um, uh, because topics get very large, I have <laughs> a gigantic amount of research material from that. And, uh, and the interdisciplinary approach to deal with the cognitive literature of religion that's starting to, to mount up as uh, over the last 10 or 15 years, as well as a discussion of um, other religions to show that the same principles of how people rationalize things have been going on for a very, very long time. And then, of course, the deep time issue, which is why do religions as we know them show up relatively recent? All of the extant religions have only a few thousand years of track record around them. In part, this would be due to the fact that they had traditions that they could start writing down. Uh, but the issue that's fascinating from a cognitive level is how far back in our lineage was there these urges for gods and things that are religious in nature? Uh, oh, Gerald Fleury is pastor general, yes, and editor-in-chief, yes. Uh, what intrigues me about it is the fact that one of the little blurbs on his uh, lecture tonight uh, had a picture uh, of uh, uh, Donald Trump and preparing for battle. So I'll find out whether or not he's a pro-Trump or anti-Trump. There is a small bunch of nutball uh, evangelicals who uh, don't like Donald Trump. Um, they're relatively minor. So my bet would be that Flurry probably is on the pro-Trump side. Oh, and I'm sure you'll be thrilled to know that the end times will happen very soon in this 22, uh, 2022 video, within 10 years or so. So keep your markers down, follow through, and then we'll come back to this in uh, 2032 and find out how things are going. I can make a prediction on that, and so far it hasn't been a bad one, that absolutely nothing will have happened. Anyway, um, which brings us up to part two of the topic, which is bad methods yield bad outcomes. And obviously you can see the matter, I would be gobsmacked if Gerald Flurry is uh, not anti-evolutionist. That would be just inexplicable from the uh, demographic of end times Daniel uh, prophecy people. Uh, but they spill over into other areas. And one of them is a, a issue that's going to be a topic of another book that Jackson Wheat and I will be dealing with, which is the conspiracy thinking stuff, <coughs> which includes uh, climate change and the mechanisms by which people argue themselves into thinking that climate change is, is a scam. Now, this is an interesting demographic because it gets away from just creationists, although you'll find the average creationist is a climate science denier, uh, but you have people that would not be typically listed in the climate science uh, or in the creationist field who also share that demographic, but what they do share typically is an extremely political uh, agenda. Uh, oh, he certainly, if I, thank you. Uh, Mr. Brian Stevens. Oh, it's so wonderful to have people who can Google net wall. Uh, I'm uh, providing the stuff. Yes, yes, yes. A Trumper. Oh my. Yes, that's um, uh, that puts him in a little measuring box already. Uh, that will be most intriguing. Uh, seven believe in trusting God. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, in this particular one that I'll be putting up is a 2019 article at ICR. Uh, by James Johnson, who is a quite regular poster. I think typically uh, there's uh, Tim Clary and uh, Guliusa and uh, uh, Jim Johnson uh, and uh, a few others that are just, and Brian Thomas, who are every single issue. So basically they're writing the stuff. There's very little. Oh, and Jay Kiebert, he's another one. Uh, Manzi of Helensburg, stop watching for a few minutes. On. Fast forward. Aha, yes. The wonderful thing about the show is you can watch it any old time you want. Sometimes uh, if I'm rushed for time or I'm worried about whether or not I will have a good connection or something, uh, I'll just um, link to it, copy the URL, punch it into a word processor file that I can get back to. And I have a whole long list of videos that I need to get to at some stage. Uh, but um, 
uh, I don't have the time to get to them uh, live necessarily. And sometimes I can have two or three videos theoretically that I would have to watch at the same time. And that is not a good idea. So uh, you can't process information that way. So I prioritize those things and anything that relates to stuff that may be of interest for any of the multiple books that Jackson and I are doing, uh, Rocks for Their Volume 2, whoop, uh, or uh, the religion book, or um, the uh, conspiracy thinking book, um, are all things that I would be following up on. Um, yes, par for the course, and peace. <laughs> um, now, in this one, uh, Johnson is questioning whether global warming threatens bird habitats. You see, if you have the idea that the creation is really good, uh, then we seemingly aren't powerful enough to be able to interfere with that. That's one of the tropes in that. And um, um, he relies on, or rather criticizes, one technical source, which isn't really a technical source. It's just a website posting by a, a Burke guy in 2019 on the BayJournal.com, uh, which is discussing uh, tricolored herons and along the way just alludes to the fact that that they're um, uh, being threatened by climate change. Um, so Johnson goes ballistic on this and uh, says, rush to blame global warming ignores habitat range history, such as the impact of cattle egrets introduced from Africa during the 20th century, as well as range dynamics involving other bird populations. Aha. Well, egrets are in fact more aggressive than the herons. And while that would play a part when it comes to shared logical space, it wouldn't make the changes to the spaces due to climate alteration go away, now would it? And that's the issue that isn't dependent on whether or not herons or egrets make the cut in a changing environment. Uh, survive five into the world and get the sixth free, yes. Yes, well, you see, I was um, uh, belonging to the uh, Antichrist of the Month Club uh, back in the 1970s where I would keep track of the various creationists um, who would be telling us about oh, it was certainly Muammar Gaddafi, or it was, the Antichrist was certainly uh, Gorbachev, or um, the uh, um, someone farther down the line in um, uh, a particular nation that they might want to be complaining about. But uh, funny, not people like Donald Trump, whose son-in-law had the address 666 Fifth Avenue. I mean, you know, what, what can I do? Um, and so they're very, very selective and how they deal with all of this stuff. Um, if you go back even farther, which is a thing that the religion book is going to be paying attention to, and I, I had a, a certain amount of that in the, because um, the Bible tells me show chapter in the book, which you can find at my website, and I've always got links to that. Um, oh, by the way, all those PDFs, feel free to download them, use them, share them with everybody. I mean, they're, they're quite um, uh, detailed. There's only a few very little miscellaneous things buried in some of the notes that more recent material would require that I uh, 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 revise. I think there's a little teeny bit where I uh, get some uh, views on uh, Bertrand Russell uh, skewed because I was basing it on only one source and I'll be correcting that when uh, he comes up in later books. Uh, but anyway, oh, I uh, went out there in the yards when, uh, yeah, see, I'm living in an environment where no cattle egrets. Uh, in fact, you wouldn't even find cattle much uh, in, uh, out in the wilderness in Washington. It's quite another man. Uh, when it's dry, they stay near the ponds and streams, so they are adapting already. Yeah, the, uh, and if they're more aggressive in the field, they can glom onto what little water is left. However, if there are certain circumstances where the river's drying up or the wetlands are drying up, um, it won't necessarily work for either one of them. And Texas being a large ecosystem where uh, cotton, for example, is already getting hard to dry. Uh, to grow in the, um, I think, in the eastern part of the state where uh, droughts are coming in, and similarly with Kansas, uh, where there are droughts uh, coming into the play. Uh, so much of the Pacific Northwest uh, in our Washington state is built off of irrigation from the Columbia River. So, and it has its headwaters way up in Canada and is such that it looks fairly stable in a way that the Colorado River and even parts of the Mississippi River and rivers in China and the Rhine and other places are getting increasingly dicey. So welcome to the 21st century, kids. Um, oh, best adults dating site, no XXX, you're a bad dog, you should be gone. Uh, this is not appropriate. Okay, we need to block the user on YouTube. There we go. Nope. 
I will not tolerate that, kids. I will not tolerate that. Nope, nope, nope. <coughs> there we go. So, um, ooh, and another one. Boy, they do they do repeat a lot, don't they? There we go. Um, yeah, they should take those off the feed when I blast them. Uh, I get comments um, from, um, I'm getting a reload warning, but I'm not persistent, so I want to get them away. There we go. Yeah. Um. If, if if sometimes you get comments from often foreign language sites uh, in Croatian or some such thing where it's clearly a porn site, and I have to delete them from the comments and that because I get look in indications on my uh, uh, Google feed uh, about that sort of stuff. And it, it doesn't happen a heck of a lot. I imagine that happens much more frequently with a much larger viewership because I have a relatively small viewership far below monetization level let us put it that way anyway <coughs> so i was therefore intrigued by the issue of egrets and uh, there we go view deleted message thank you very much brian um egrets are um there are studies on the heron and egret habitats and interactions uh there's a 1997 thing uh, on florida part of it i'll be putting a paper up on that uh, 2011 uh cook um which is um uh, it's for some reason, other listed as 2005, and uh, others attending to uh, Texas. So you can make use of it in there. Ooh, plenty of ticks here, but not many egrets in the direct area. Plenty of data, so I have to de tick pets regularly, they chase the birds, and white them are in the yard. Ah, the, the wonderful habitat of the arthropods. They're um, resilient little bastards and um, are relatively extinction proof. I think. Um, uh, if memory serves me, about the only mass extinction that kind of produced a speed bump for arthropods uh, was the Permian mass extinction. But other than that, it didn't really affect them prior ones because so many of them were, um, the, the marine extinction was a more dominant one in the Ordovician uh, and Devonian ones. And um, then, of course, you get a less severe one in the uh, Jurassic, uh, Triassic and Cret Cretaceous. Uh, the, the herons here hang with the turkeys, but not the egrets. Do they form like gangs and, and you know, the little turkeys uh, wiggling their waddles at each other and the herons making fun of them? No. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <coughs> so um, that stuff is an indication that when a creationist tries to apply their energy to another area, odds are they're going to screw up in exactly the way they have done with the creationism. And so then um, you can look at the methods, which is what sources are they offering? Are they offering dated sources and all the rest? And you find exactly the same elements of cherry picking and uh, uh, source manipulation and dated material in the non-creationist branch of climate science denying. Um, there was a, a, a fellow that came up. He was, a, in fact, a geologist that um, uh, shows up in one paper that I have in just a regular secular paper. But anyway, he's apparently got on the climate science scam gambit. And um, um, he linked to, after some prodding, some papers that aren't really supporting his position very well. And uh, all of that will show up in the book in that as well, because it's an indication. Uh, you find occasionally anti-creationists who are climate science and I'm Ian, Ian Plymer uh, down in Australia. Uh, falls into that one of the most impenetrable books i've ever seen on the subject of climate science is absolutely screwball uh, oh yeah very long time bird watcher barbara yes uh, we had a fun time uh, many moons ago going out to the bird sanctuary out in the valley uh, well not the valley that's the other side but anyway out in, out in the hinterlands um that um, um we have a little bit of like a micro marsh thing uh, in the area probably ecologically left over from all the little ponds and stuff that, that occurred from drainage systems uh, occurring from the scouring of the landscape during the Missoula floods in the same way that Four Lakes and 
and um, uh, Liberty Lake and all of that are the leftovers of these things as well. When anybody who flies into Spokane, you're seeing all these little pockmarked lakes all over the place. Those are the puddles that refill and are kept fairly constant um, uh, because everything got bumpy uh, and scoured uh, during the many, 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 uh, 15, 20 uh, Missoula floods that uh, slipped down through in the area. So anyway, uh, we got about a 20 minutes thing on here. Are there any questions from those here are on board? Um, if not, I'll probably pull the plug on the thing while we still have a good connection on it. Again, once the thing gets coordinated, uh, I'll be putting the links into the show, and then we will be seeing you again in January 2023, where presumably all the problems of the world will be repaired. There will be peace and joy everywhere, and um, uh, Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin will have burst into flames. Just, just suggesting. Oh, I need a type of ibis that dominates and can be a nuisance uh, and decent alarm clock. They go after King cockroaches. Oh, okay. Well, there's the, uh, what's so f interesting about a lot of the ecological impact of climate change has to do with, <coughs> with the interconnections of things as they find out that uh, the presence of a predator, if you remove the predator, creates a dynamic where prey go hog wild and you have a completely different dynamic uh the absence of lions and others in africa because they're hunted uh as as dangerous predators has meant that the herbivores are so good at punching on the landscape that they denude the forests and suddenly there's not much forest left so you have to have a dynamic of where you're looking at all of these things um same thing goes with a lot of bird predation uh, I, I think there was a weird connection between um, the birds that, that nest and poop um, in like Chile and how the stuff ends up acting as a dynamic that changes the fish population down in the oceans as the stuff waters down. And so it's it's a, an intriguing dynamic that's going on in there. Needless to say, oh, yes, Turnbull. Um, um, there we go. That's uh, I couldn't remember the name of it. Turnbull National Wildlife Refuge. Um so anyway, we've got, uh, yes, I will try to enjoy myself during the next few weeks uh, to welcome in the new year and visit my little great grandniece, um, or no, great great grandniece, actually, little Sloney, who is just a hilarious live wire. Very verbal age two. Uh, I'll be uh, studying the child and putting down some of the little bits for potential inclusion for the kids that are eventually going to be showing up in the other paralogs of Fogg's uh, 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 alternate Jules Verne novels. And remember, four books out there, get them still from Amazon for your reader friends. Wonderful fiction and wonderful science fact. Uh, I'm very proud of all the work that I've done on it and will continue going along on this as long as possible, provided I don't drop dead trying to shovel the stuff off the driveway. Maybe next year I'll be able to get an electric snow thrower, which the prices are now dropping down. Um, and um, that will be a nice thing to get because, oh, gas powered ones to start were just an absolute pain. And uh, I much like the idea of just plugging a couple batteries in, go bloop, and we're off. So uh, everybody all uh, see you next year. If everybody try not to get flu or COVID or monkey pox or asteroid impact or whatever else, drive by shootings and all many wacky things that can happen these days. Uh, and uh, see you next year, kids. Ending the stream.